My name is Rhiannon Curtis and I'm going to tell you about the Lyon Hypothesis. In the early 1960s, Mary Lyon came up with a hypothesis in order to even out the discrepancies within gene expression on the X chromosomes in males and females. Females have two X chromosomes, while males only have one. And for this reason, females undergo X inactivation in their somatic cells. During X inactivations, one of the X chromosomes in the female's somatic cells is randomly inactivated during development. The inactivation of the X chromosome causes a bar body to be created on the cell nucleus. This bar body is a tightly condensed X chromosome that because of its condensed structure cannot be expressed, thus no proteins are being created from this chromosome. X-linked inheritance is a trait that is expressed through the X chromosome. It can either be dominant or recessive. X-linked traits are far more common in males than females because of X inactivation. In females, one of their X chromosomes is randomly inactivated, which means that for X-linked traits, there's a 50-50 chance in each somatic cell that the affected X chromosome will be inactivated and thus turned into a bar body on the cell nucleus. This will prevent that chromosome from undergoing gene expression, therefore preventing the female from showing the X-linked trait. In males, no X inactivation occurs, and so if they inherit an X-linked trait, they will show the phenotype regardless of whether it's dominant or recessive. An example we're going to look at is a tortoiseshell cat. In order to have this fur pattern, the cat must be a heterozygous female for both phenotypes. The X inactivation in females creates a mosaic effect within their cells. Each of her somatic cells has one X chromosome that has a black genotype and one that has a yellow genotype. Within each of these cells, an X chromosome is randomly inactivated. This could be either the black or yellow genotype. Then, because some of her cells express the black phenotype while others express the yellow phenotype, the female cat will be able to express both phenotypes at the same time, which creates the tortoiseshell appearance of her coat. The other X chromosome is inactive. Another example we're going to look at is this cross between a yellow short-haired female and a black long-haired male. Black fur is still dominant over yellow fur on the X chromosome, and in addition, long fur is dominant over short fur. In order to examine what their progeny would look like, we created a branch diagram with both phenotypes, being color and length of their fur. We found that there's a 50% chance there'll be a tortoiseshell female and a 50% chance there'll be a yellow male. In addition, each of those has a 50% chance of being long or short hair. This creates a 25% chance for each of the following progenies, tortoiseshell female with long hair, tortoiseshell female with short hair, yellow male with long hair, and yellow male with short hair. Lastly, you may be wondering if you could clone a tortoiseshell cat to look exactly like its mother. This is impossible. DNA from the mother is replicated in order to produce the offspring. The mother already has randomly inactivated X chromosomes within each cell, but because the development of the somatic cells within the offspring has yet to happen, the X chromosomes must both be active at the beginning of development. Thus, the inactivated X is turned back on or reactivated in each cell to allow for X inactivation to occur again independently from the mother. This means that for offspring, which X becomes inactivated, is independent from the mother and random, creating a whole new phenotype in the offspring, thus allowing it not to be an exact copy of the mother.